If you're a web developer like me, you've probably built a lot of reusable components. Today, I want to show you an anti-pattern when it comes to styling these components, which is a trap that a lot of beginners fall into. Let's jump into it. Now, I first want to shout out Carl Shevlin here for his blog post, which pretty much reminded me of the fact that I learned this rule in the first place. And the rule is no outer margin, as he describes here. I'll leave a link to this blog post in the description below. I highly recommend you go and check it out. But let's jump into the code to show you an example of what I'm talking about here. So if we load up VS Code here, what you'll see on the right here is I have a red box. And this is an example reusable component. Obviously, this could be a button in your case or anything like a card, something displaying some information that you have as reusable. Now, what if I wanted three of these stacked on top of each other? So let's say I get another one and then another one and save that. You'll see they stack on top of each other. Now, as a beginner, what if I want, let's say, some spacing between them? Well, what I could do is go ahead and add some margin bottom. So if I add a margin bottom of six and in CSS, that's just going to be margin bottom of 1.5 rem or any value, obviously. Um, and you'll see there it does exactly what I wanted. It adds some bottom margin to it. So that all spaced out nicely with the same value. Now, this is actually the anti pattern is in reusable components. You don't want to use outer margins. So as I said, this is an outer margin because it's adding that margin bottom outside of that component there and spacing between it. Now, what's the reason for not wanting to use this? Well, let's say I wanted to add something else underneath the box, but I want it to be right up against that box there. If I go ahead and add, say, the text subscribe and save that, you'll see that it has a margin bottom of six. But what if I did want that to be right next to that? Now, it's going to be a bit difficult with our reusable component here to make that happen. And what we could jump to, especially I've seen beginners jump to this, is adding props such as margin bottom, and then you could make that a number or something to define what the margin bottom is or a boolean for whether there should be one. But you probably don't want that. And one of the reasons is what if you wanted all of your items to be up against each other? So if I change that to flex, you'll see that there's no spacing between these items now on the right. So what would you do? Would you jump to margin right of six? Well, no, this is where we need to fix this pattern. And if I go ahead and go back to what we had, and if I delete this margin bottom here, what we'll do is we'll use what we're going to call the layout container. So here we have that div with the width full. So I'm going to take this subscribe out quickly and I'm going to put it outside the div. So this div here is now managing the layout for our three boxes here. So how can we go ahead and add that width back to it? Well, we can use a tool such as flex. And in this case, it's going to be a flex column to get that same sort of pattern that we had here of them being stacked. And in CSS, that's just going to be display flex and flex direction column. Now, when we hit save, You'll see, obviously, it's not got any spacing between it now. But what we can do is use the gap utility now. So if I do gap six, again, that's that 1.5 rem, 24 pixels. So it's the exact same spacing there. But as you can see, it hasn't changed the subscribe because the gap is only sort of internal within this div here. It's not applying anything to the outside of this layout container. It's applying the gap within. So it's the gap between these elements here, aka these three boxes here. Now, the other big advantage of that is if I change this to a flex row, you'll see that it applies that gap for us. We haven't had to add a margin right or anything. And again, our reusable component doesn't control any of its own sort of layout, essentially. It looks exactly how it looks and everything inside it looks the same, but it's not controlling any sort of how it's laid out against other elements that you may use. That's where you want to use a layout container like this. So as I said, that's sort of the neat trick of no outer margins. Now. Another recommendation as well is obviously if you're using margin bottom, don't use padding on outer elements like this either, unless, as is my case, you have a border or a background. Because you'll see if you don't have a border or a background, the padding is essentially serving the same purpose as a margin. But essentially, that is the rule of no outer margins there. And it's just a really good way to do it. The other benefit, of course, is we're now using flex or grid for our layout, for example. And we can actually change this to, let's say, if I added the width to be 50 pixels on each of these boxes, we can actually use some flex utilities to handle the spacing for us. So let's say I use justify between and in pure CSS, that's gonna be justify content space between. You'll see that it works out the spacing that it needs to do to space between it. And this will be responsive as well. If we size down this um, window, you would see that the space between slowly gets smaller and smaller and it just looks even. And there's several utilities like this. Obviously you have justify evenly as well which is essentially going to make sure that between any two elements, there's the same amount of spacing as well. Now, if you want to learn more about these sort of flex tricks, you can actually go to CSS tricks and I'll leave a link to this 
blog in the description down below but this is the ultimate cheat sheet for anything flexbox and you'll see what i was talking about here with space between space around space evenly and then it will give you the definition of what they are as well and it will just show you everything you can do with flex and then down here i believe it has a bit on gap as well showing you that you could even have different row gaps and column gaps if you wanted to define them like this using that syntax and this is just the really neat trick for using no outer margins so in summary don't use outer margins use a layout container and then use styling such as flex and gap utilities to handle the spacing between them there thank you very much for watching if you want to see more of this content please subscribe leave a comment down below if you have any more questions thank you